everybody. Uh, welcome to another Career Path panel uh, by Mention Me. Today we have with us Robin. Sure. Uh, so just a little bit about myself. I'm from Surat, India. I joined TISB in sixth grade. So I was there for seven years. Um, graduated in 2016 and then attended UVA. Um, at UVA, I majored in finance and IT with tracks in uh, quantitative analytics and quantitative finance. Um, and after UVA, I, um, I did an internship my third year at this investment bank called Nomura. And uh, for, I joined them full-time as well because I really liked my experience. So I'm currently working as a first-year analyst um, in the distressed finance division at Nomura. So as I mentioned, I'm on the distressed finance team. So in my third year, during my internship, uh, I rotated through agency mortgages, uh, equity derivatives, and distressed finance. Um, and distressed finance was the one desk that I liked the most. So when I decided to join full-time, I decided that this was the one thing, uh, this was the one desk that I was for sure going to choose. Um, overall, most of the work is investment banking type stuff. So you, you analyze companies, uh, you start from scratch, basically analyze the history of the company, then do some financial analysis, uh, more qualitative analysis as well. But uh, that comes in more with the history of the company. So I think the point is to figure out why does the company need to exist in the first place? And how does the company make money? Um, based on that analysis, you then build financial models, including valuation and cash flow models. Um, once you have all that ready and you've done some industry analysis as well as some other bigger type, broader analysis like political analysis, economic analysis, and how those kind of things will also affect the company in the future, um, you then do more in-depth credit research in terms of when you invest in the company, how, what's your return going to look like? So you, so you try to figure out, you do Monte Carlo simulations to figure out what the downside will be. Because as credit investors, we know that the upside will be just getting our money back at par with interest. But then we have to analyze all the different situations in the downside. So I would say most, most of my work as an analyst is a lot of in-depth company and industry research. Um, and in preparing pitches, which I then present to the senior management, as well as other cross-functional divisions of Nomura, which includes like risk and other kinds of like securitized products and other divisions. Yeah, so I wake up at around 7.30. Um, I'll read some news, obviously Financial Times, Wall Street Journal, try to catch up before the market opens at 9.30. Um, then uh, work starts at nine. We usually have our morning meetings um, then till about 10. And then after that, everyone starts at their own pace. So basically um, everyone knows what they're doing. So some, someone, for example, one of my colleagues will be researching the car market. I might be doing some other sort of research. So we start on that basic research. Um, then we get together for different calls throughout the day because our research basically supplements each other's. So then we educate each other on what our, our research was, what were the key takeaways, um, and then move forward from there. Then we have uh, calls throughout the day with senior management, as well as our managing directors who then like let us know like what other deal is coming through. And um, some days are really like not that busy. Uh, it all depends, but given like given the situation around the world right now and because I'm in the distressed finance space, COVID has <laughs> made it really busy right now. So most of the time we're working on two to three live deals at once. So it's a lot of different things going on throughout the day. And then we have some other calls with like uh, the other divisions of the firm. And uh, some, once in a while, we also have calls with the company management and that's them explaining what, what exactly do they want from us and how we can help them. So yeah, mo most of the time it's like conference calls, research work. Uh, and uh, I would say that obviously given that we're in this virtual environment now, it's, it's obviously very different. And to be honest, I, even I have, have, haven't experienced the office life like firsthand now, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's much better than I thought. Like, I mean, I thought the virtual experience would be like uh, pretty horrible, but I think it's pretty good overall. They've, the companies have done a really good job of making sure that everyone is involved, staying connected and basically be able to do the same work virtually that you would do in an office. Sure. Um, so in IB itself, I think the foundation was sort of laid. Uh, when I took like econ HL, math HL, I always knew that I wanted to do something in business. And my family also has been in the business industry, like in the textile industry for like 20 years. So I, I for sure knew that I wanted to get into business, but didn't know what exactly. So going into UVA, the best part was that they have a two-year business program that only starts in the third year. So the first two years, everyone goes in like undecided. So there's no pre-admits. So everyone goes in undecided. You take the prerequisite courses. And then based on your GPA and your co-curriculars, you then apply to the business school in your second year. And uh, 
so luckily i got into the business school um i did well in my prereqs but i also was involved in a lot of other clubs um for example the sales and trading club um as well as the investment banking club so those kind of things also help you sort of understand even though at that point like you don't know what exactly is happening in terms of like all these complicated financial models but at least you're going and attending those meetings so you're trying to learn from your seniors who are already in the business school and know what's going on so i think experience plays a huge role but that was just the beginning for me right even even then i wasn't really sure i wanted to get into banking uh but after i would say taking a few courses and getting into the business school taking a few basic finance courses i realized that this was probably the one thing that no one had to force me to do it like you know like there are other things that people force you and then like why aren't you doing this why aren't you getting your work done so this was just like a natural flow kind of thing like every morning i used to like why don't we read the wall street journal today so it was something that came like naturally it wasn't someone forcing me to do it so i think that played a huge role and even my classes like even my finance classes they were pretty like complicated classes but i wasn't like working that hard or anything like i was doing decent work but i was still able to like do really well in those classes so i realized that this is something that comes to me naturally and i really like the field so i think overall i would say going with the flow is very important sometimes like you don't really have to have like a set path like okay i want to do like i, I wake up to do, tomorrow and then now i really, really like banking or now i really like consulting it's not like that i think it's just like going with the flow and seeing what your like other peers are doing as well i think that also plays a huge role and learning from the seniors of Yes, yeah, so I would say the pros were definitely uh, UBA does a really good job of making sure that you have to take a lot of other courses your first two years when you're not in the business school, so you do get to experience a lot of other fields. So that way, I got to experience psychology because I took like one or two psychology courses, ended up really liking it, and then did a minor in psychology. Even after I got into the business school, I was like, let's just finish the minor outside. So I think, I think that does a really good job of like helping you explore a lot of other fields as well. even those like i would have never thought going into college that i would ever take a psychology course but just because we had to fill the credit requirement i took that course and then i ended up liking it so much that i completed a minor so i think luckily because it wasn't like a four year business school program i did get to experience other aspects of the university and other classes and fields as well so i would say there were there weren't too many cons but i can definitely imagine that for someone going for like a four year business business school program like maybe nyu stern or something that gets a lot i feel like too much finance or too much business throughout the four years so you do might not get to experience other fields but uh i guess the pro obviously is that you will be very strong in your fundamental skills and that that will help you a lot on the job but i guess two years are also good enough for you to like learn those skills you don't need the four years that's what i would say but it all depends on person to person like whatever you like best I think the biggest thing that I learned in TISB in general like from 10th 11th 12th onwards is like don't take everything too seriously. I feel like you like people really need to chill out and like they get too stressed out about like stupid shit like oh I didn't get into Cornell for example. I feel like all this stuff 5 years 6 years down the line if you're doing what you like everyone will end up at that level. So you don't need really need to be worried about like the smaller things that happen around you in 11th and 12th. like just go with the flow and enjoy the classes that you're taking i would say if anything try to find maybe like a broader field or even if you can't find something that you like find things that you don't like so at least you can start eliminating things like okay i don't like law i don't like physics so you can start eliminating things if not find like what you like at least you'll know that okay i don't want to do this so going into college you'll have like a much better view of like what what exactly you might want to do at least you've eliminated like 10 8 to 10 options so it'll be much easier to find like what you like that way but i would say 11 12 there's really no need to think about like a career path in general just like enjoy it as we enjoy staying with friends like like four years down the line you realize like how you really miss those days now because like once you're on the job it's just like a regular grind so there's you don't really get to spend that much time with friends so enjoy the tias we life don't take everything too seriously just go with the flow and in the end i think if you if you find what you like everything will work out it doesn't matter what college you go to what your gpa was or like as long as you wake up every day just like liking what you do you'll be fine that's that's what i would say for me probably it would be just i realized from tisb like even the basic business courses in tisb teach you how important like fundamental skills are 
and how important common sense and like how how underrated common sense is so i think tisb does a really good job of like because in staying in a boarding school for people at least like who are in the boarding school they get a really good experience of everything like not just academics but then i think that really teaches you how life works and how the world works so you get a very good sense of when to use your common sense and when to like stick to other things so i i feel like people a lot of people in real life they just stick to like oh i read this in my textbook so that's probably true but that never never really happens like most of the time in my field like my my colleagues actually get really angry like my seniors get really angry when people talk about textbooks because in you have to like think with an open mind and i feel like tisb gives you the environment because you experience everything you experience like fights you experience friendships you like date people so you like you get to see like all different like aspects of life in like how many ever years like you're in tisb um but i would say definitely like sticking to fundamentals like always like whenever you find yourself confused go back to the fundamentals like if you're reading like a complex annual report let's say of a company that you don't understand always go back to the basics of what you learned in your business class for example like oh how how do the three statements tie together what is this company do and how does it relate to the basic stuff that i learned so i think that that was one of the things that i learned in tsb because even now sometimes i think about my econ hl classes when when like analyzing like deep credit reports or like economic like reading high level economic analysis i still think back to what mr navin tom like taught me in 11th grade so i feel like those kind of things always come back to you so i think sticking to fundamentals is really important um and just yeah i would say just like use your common sense <laughs> and uh yeah i i guess that's those are the two main like i wouldn't say like skills but like in general like how to deal with life i think tisb really teaches you that really well most of the skills you pick up by like joining clubs like you don't really learn these skills in class because that's where you learn like basic concepts but once you join these clubs you as i mentioned you sit, take part in like stock pitches and you actually travel with your team for example i i was involved in this trading club and we actually traveled to canada for this trading competition so like those kind of things really i feel like teach you these skills and teamwork um i would say going to a bigger school obviously my first two years all my classes had like some classes are like 400 500 people so i think in a way i would say that's a good experience but obviously it has its cons like but the fact that you're able to survive in that class do well and you have so many friends in the class so i feel like there are pros and cons but in the end like once i got into the business school then each class only had like 20 30 people so i would say i got to experience both both the things at uva like my first two years was a very like general kind of program and then the next two years next two years became very spe business specific and finance specific um but yeah i would say like the skills that you learn in a in a specific environment are definitely you get to build strong connections with your with your with your colleagues and your peers so i think that's really important in like in real world because i would say the biggest the most underrated thing in in professional life is teamwork and everyone thinks that people just say it for the sake of it but then once you actually start your job you realize like how important it is like okay fine in school you might want to compete on like gpa and stuff but once you get to real life like it's one team like you all have to support each other no one's like trying to beat anyone here like if i find some information that might be useful for someone else i have to make it a point to like call them and like let them know so i think like that teamwork you only start to learn in like a much smaller kind of environment so i would say if my preference would be that if you get a choice to go to a college which is like a huge like campus with like where you know your class is going to be like 500 600 people then try to like if if possible try to go to a place where you know that your classes will only have like 20 30 people at max and it'll be or, or at least like it'll start off bigger but then it'll get smaller eventually so like make sure that you get both the experiences or at least get the specific experience because that's more applicable to real life that's what i would say Yeah, I think it was uh, more of a flow thing. It didn't happen overnight. Definitely. So, like even when I was recruiting, I kept both my options open, so banking and consulting were my two main options, and I would be open to doing either. But luckily I got like my first preference, so I I took that. But I feel like even when people like when you come out of college, you might not really get your first preference in terms of like the field that you want to get into, but just go for it like just for the experience because you're like you're 21, 22. So at this point like nothing can hurt you as long as you're getting like good experience and don't really like even if it's a job that doesn't like for example pay too well just like go for it for the experience because like you'll really value that later in life for me for example uh my first year 
I tried to find an internship here in the US itself, but then I didn't really find something that good. So I decided to go back home and work there. My second year, I got like a marketing internship in New York itself. And I could either do a finance internship back home in India, which would be more applicable to my field or do a marketing internship here in New York. So I actually decided to do the marketing one here. Um, and that was, I would say it was a tough choice at the time, but then it paid off at the end because um, I realized that why, being in New York, I was doing a different field altogether, but then I was able to network with a lot of other people in the city. So you might not really like, sometimes you don't see the blessing in this guys, right? So I think that was, that was one of the experiences that I had. And slowly, like, I think your classes, your internships, your peers, I think, play a huge role in influencing your career path. It's not just, I, I don't think for anyone, it's like an overnight thing where you just like wake up and you're like, okay, I want to do this. So you just go with the flow, whatever you get, just like embrace it. And don't, don't be too worried about like, if you don't get something that you don't like, just like take it for the experience. And in the end, you'll value it. That's what I would say. Sure. Um, I think teamwork definitely, as we mentioned, is very important. And I think uh, a lot of people say that, oh, IQ is super important. Definitely in any field, IQ is one of the most important, but then people also don't talk about EQ, which is equally important because IQ will get you the job. You will do well as a junior, but then you only progress in the organization when you have EQ as well, because you need to connect with people. You need to teach your juniors because right now, like very soon, I'm going to be start re re uh, recruiting people like first year analysts and reviewing resumes. So I feel like those kind of things like, EQ is very important for that because yeah, you can just like sit in front of a computer and do as much quantitative analysis as you can from whatever statistical class you took, like, you know, that stuff, but then getting out in front of people, participating in like different panels, for example, reaching out to colleagues, like when you don't understand something, I feel like this is also very underrated. People don't understand the fact that you have so many resources around you, but they're just like, they're just afraid to use them. Like they always think the best solution is like, just Google it. But that's really not the case. I feel like a lot of the times, like another person right next to you can teach you that concept in such a, like in so, such a better way that you'll remember it for the rest of your life. And I feel like Google definitely like gives you the definition and stuff, but you don't really get to experience that like one-to-one -one interaction with the other person. So I would say definitely like reaching out to colleagues is very important, very underrated teamwork and how to actually be a good team player is very underrated. Um, yeah. And I feel like these are, these are the two main skills that will help you progress in any organization. Doesn't matter when, which industry or like what role you start at, like you will progress in the organization. If you, if you have a, like a good IQ as well as EQ. Sure. Um, I would say for me, the biggest benefit was that it gave me a good break from all my hardcore, like finance quantitative classes. It gave me a really good break to go into like a totally different field than like not do any math for like a few hours. So that was really nice. But I would say that more, more importantly, definitely, I think it gives you a much broader experience. As I said, like in the end, like you need to be smart about how the world works and you need to be street smart. And I feel like just doing one field or just doing like, for example, math does not give you that. So I think like for me, I found luckily for me, I found that psychology actually pay, plays a huge role in finance as well. For example, like, basically everything in the economy works on game theory and psychology too. For example, the stock market. So I feel like those kind of things connected and I, I was able to see those connections very early. So I think that helps, but I know some of my friends who went for like completely different like minors altogether that had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with their field. But I feel like they also really like enjoyed the experience because they said it gave them a really good break. And it, it gave them an experience to learn something different. So just in case, maybe like down, down the line, they realize that they want to do a master's for, for example, but they don't really like the field that they majored in. So they can always try to pursue a, a master in the field that they have a minor in, because I know that some colleges allow you to do a master's in that field, even if you had a minor as an undergrad. So I think that opens up a lot of your doors for the future as well. So it's not just about like in the moment you get a good break, but then in the future, like you can always keep that door open. So I think, yeah, mental health is a huge, huge factor. But then I feel like as an analyst in, in the finance industry, it gets, as, as you, you said it rightly, like more, it gets very busy, especially like for me in, in the distress field, it's really busy right now because of COVID elections, uh, vaccine coming out soon or not, US-China trade war. So there are a lot of different uncertainties right now. So it's especially really, really busy. But then um, 
I feel like because as I mentioned, I really like take this not as a job, but as something I really like to do every day on my own. So it doesn't really feel that stressful at all. And most people tell me like, how, how come you're not stressed? Or like, how come you don't seem tired? Like right now it's like midnight here. And I was literally like working 20 minutes before this call as well. Like I started at 9 a.m. and I finished at like 11.30. So it does get pretty like tiring sometimes, but I feel like it's, you don't really take it as a job. So if, as long as you like, try to like take some like short breaks in the middle, that really helps. And if you like what you're doing, I don't think like your mental health will be affected regardless of like how much work you're putting in. And I feel like when you're, when you're a youngster, you're 21, 22, that, those are the years that you should be putting in your maximum effort. And then afterwards, obviously, once you move to the senior positions, then life becomes a lot more chill. Um, but yeah, just wanted to add that mental health is definitely super important. You need like you yourself are responsible for your own mental health and no one's going to come and tell you like, yeah, take your break now or like go for a walk now. So it's, it's your responsibility to take care of your body and, and your mind at the same time. So for me, what I try to do is like, I try to catch up with friends once every three, three, four days, even like on weekdays. Like when I have a light day, I try to reach out to my friends or when they have light days, they try to reach out to me. So not, not just over the weekends, but like also over the weekdays, like whenever you find time, just go grab coffee with your friends um, and definitely try to make time for like at least like one hour a day, if possible, like to work out. I think a lot of people think that working out is just like you're doing it just to like look good. But that's really not the case because working out really helps your brain work better. That's what I've experienced. Like sometimes even when I'm having the most tiring day, I work out and I actually feel much fresher. So I think working out definitely is a huge, huge factor and staying fit. Obviously, that's another benefit. So I think those are the two main things that I have experienced, like what I try to do. So like take like short breaks in the middle, try to catch up with friends whenever possible. And at this time, like given COVID and the circumstances, I would say for people who are away from their families, it's really, really important to stay in touch with your family because they're also going through a lot. It's not just like you're going through your work life, but they're also going through a lot. So like you need to like reach out to your family members and like support each other at this time. And I feel like if there were, I don't think there could be a better time to connect with your friends and family than like right now. So like make the most of it. That's what I would say. Yeah, definitely. I feel like it's a little harder for people who haven't been in a boarding school, um, like the ASB for like day scholars, even then, like they find it a little harder than boarding school people. That's what I would say. But I feel like everyone does get used to it. It takes like maybe two, three more months for them to get used to it. But in the end, everyone is at the same level. Um, so I would say like going into college, as I mentioned, right, don't take everything too seriously. I feel like people will burden you like with a lot of different things like, oh, like what college are you going to? Like, what are you going to major in? Like, just just tell people that like, even if you're like completely undecided, just just say it upfront. Like, I don't know. And I'll go and experience it on my own. And I'll decide like whatever I like to do. So I feel like, just don't get bogged down by the pressure of the society. And even sometimes like in DISB, I notice like even like a lot of teachers and counselors have this habit of doing the same thing. Like they have this habit of like asking you over and over, like, like, what are you going to major in? Why are you going to this college? So like, I feel like in, in your mind, if you're clear that in the end, like you'll do what you like and you, you don't care about what the society says, I feel like you'll be, you'll be fine. So my, my, my straight advice would be even like, I, I used to take a lot of things too seriously back then. But then I realized like once you move to college, like it doesn't really matter. Like it's, it's a completely different life altogether. So like five, six months into college, you won't even remember what your TISB teacher or your TISB counselor said to you. Like, so just like, don't think too much about it. Sometimes like, yeah, it does get a little like tense in the situation. Like, oh, I don't like my friends already know that he's going to go to med school or he's going to do that. So sometimes you don't, but that's totally okay. And you're like, what, you're like 18 years old. So like, just, just take it easy. People like sometimes I've noticed that people, even in finance, like even in my bank, for example, some people join at the age of 30, 35, like that's literally their first year in banking. And by the time they're 40, they're really, really good at it. So like in the end, like you can always transition to different fields. So don't take everything too seriously and just enjoy what you're doing. I think that's the main thing coming out of TISB. Uh, going on the side is severely underrated, especially in TISB. Um, For sure, yeah. When I was there, uh, but and I understand, like I understand the cons of like going in undecided because sometimes in big big schools, if there's cap majors, you know, sometimes it always doesn't work out going in undecided. Like I I understand that, but I think um if you have the option to, and if you don't know what you're doing, I think it's definitely something that something people should consider seriously. 
this is more of like a personal question for people like to decide on their own like it really depends for from people to, like from person to person for some people like for example weather plays a huge role so like they can't really go to like a place where it like gets really cold like michigan for example so like it's really your personal decision like based on like external factor, factors that you mat- that matter to you for example weather or like college campus for example that matters a lot to people for me definitely it mattered so i decided to go to uva mainly because the campus was really really nice and i knew that i wanted a, like a college campus environment and not just like an nyu kind of environment where you literally like walk into a building every day so it feels like you're going into work every morning so i definitely wanted my undergrad experience to be different from that so i think like i would say sit down with with yourself for like 10 15 minutes and think about like like most people don't think about these things right but like just sit sit by yourself just like think about what factors actually matter to you in deciding a college because a lot of the times you'll find that these small small factors play a huge role and in the end like i feel like any coming out of tisb most people go to like very good colleges so in the end you'll be fine just so just make sure that whatever factors matter to you for example weather or like campus like make sure you account for those and then you you'll be fine like in terms of academics i think everyone every college will get you to the same level in the end as long as you're you you're good at what you do that's what i would say um uh, especially for people who come to us it gets a little difficult especially the first two years to find like a good internship and given like how strict these guys are being with their like immigration rules and stuff it's only going to get harder so my advice is like just keep all your options open um even other countries like if you get a good opportunity let's say for example in london so like don't don't like refuse it definitely keep it open and um i would say go with a very like open mind like first two years just expect to get like no good internship that's what happens to everyone in college like no one gets a good internship your first two years but i would say definitely prep a lot for your third year internship because that matters a lot especially in like f- the finance industry that that's probably going to be the most important internship because that's what's going to lead to a full time job so as i mentioned right when i was doing the second year like my second year when i was doing that marketing internship here in new york i spent a lot of time outside of work networking with other bankers here in new york and learning about their field so that's what further helped me realize that I, this is what i wanted to do but it also gives you more time to prepare for interviews of your third year internship because usually banking interviews start actually one and a half year before the actual job so i already had my internship third year internship offer letter before i finished my second year internship so it's that early so i feel like you need to be like ready for that so even if like the first two years you find yourself you're not getting anything good just like take whatever you get for the experience but at the same time know that it's really important to prepare for your third year internship at least in finance which will be really important i don't know about how it works in like other other industries but in finance and consulting i would say third year internships are probably the most important and even in case like for example something happens you don't really like even in your third year you don't know what you want to do like that's totally okay you can always just go for full time recruiting which is going to be a little harder but as long as by then you figured out like what is it like what it is you want to do at least like a broader level idea like okay i want to do marketing for example like at least you'll know like like what you're interested in so then you'll still find something and in case like you don't find something in america i would say it's going to get harder and harder so just keep all your other options open as well like if you like something in canada or like europe or anywhere else just keep all options open especially for finance i would say us is definitely probably the best place to be us or london i would say this is probably the next best uk us either one so keep those two options open definitely but in general if you're going like if you're not sure like what you want to do i would say keep everything all the other options open as well because i've heard from some of my cousins as well who went to singapore like they went to nus i think and they told me about what a great college it is so like there are a lot of other options that are open now because i feel like firstly it all depends on what's going to happen in the next 10 days in the us election it all a lot depends on that so like wait and watch but if trump wins then definitely keep all your other options open that's what i would suggest um because you never really like these these kind of political things you never really like can predict like coming in for us like we didn't know like 2016 election was like who's going who's going to win right so we came in thinking yeah like us is going to be like pretty easy to settle down even after but i feel like when you can't predict these kind of things it's better to just go with an open mind and keep all the other options open i know some people who just apply like all 12 colleges us 
which is a very stupid thing to do honestly so like at least keep like two three other options open for example one in canada one uk or something like that just in case there's some like policy issue with america you can always like go to these other places and and try to explore the options there so i think yeah definitely keeping an open mind is very important but it it also depends a lot on your field yeah i'll say very challenging but it keeps you on your toes all the time so that's i feel that's the best part for me like i'm i'm one of those guys if you just like give me the same thing to do over and over i get very bored but here for for me like in this industry i found that in and and this company as well i found that every day like no two no two days are the same no two companies are the same so like you're always on your toes and there's always something going on in the market like oh you check the news like oh what happened there's a there's a trade war or there's some tariff or like this guy got covid or something and in the end all these like these kind of news things affect the market so you have to stay up to date so i feel like it's very very challenging sometimes like there's so much information like there's almost like a data overflow sometimes like you're seeing so much data that after a point like even when you close your eyes like all you see is like numbers and graphs so like it does happen but like it's it's okay because like i feel like in the end you're doing something productive and you're dealing with like real life situations where you're actually helping people and companies so in the end like once you help these company you have to know like broader level once you help these companies they're going to survive and they're going to give people jobs so you're saving a lot of people jobs you're helping the economy as well so i feel like once you know that from like a broader level view like you really like what you do in the end and your work is meaningful i think that's really important so i would say yeah definitely like just to summarize very challenging work and it definitely like makes you a little, feel a little overwhelmed overwhelmed sometimes but stay stay positive and i would say never give up that's that's the biggest thing that i've learned like over even in like psb or college I, i would just say like never give up that's that's the most important thing putting myself in this like in the seat of an 11th grader or a 12th grader right now i can imagine like they have a lot of things going on in their head right now especially like now given covid they're not even sure like what colleges they want to apply to like or what's going to happen next year like our college is even going to open so i feel like they're going through a lot right now and they have to like just understand that it's not just you like we're all in this together and everyone has their own struggles so like you might think that oh like this guy's sitting here like four years after college and he has everything figured out that's that's really not how it works like everyone has their own struggles but just like i feel like just stay positive and don't like my biggest advice is just don't take everything too seriously because i had this habit in tisb of taking a lot of things too seriously like okay even when i had like a small fight with one of my friends i used to like think a lot about those kind of stupid things but just like just remember that in the end like all that doesn't matter at all like six months down the line or like you won't even remember that so i would say just enjoy what you do if you like whatever you like if you like watching cricket or you like watching football or you like whatever you like doing just like do that like don't think about like too many things about like oh i'm i'm missing out on like my econ hl homework and stuff like i feel like all that doesn't matter in tisb just stay positive in the end everything does work out for everyone so it might take a little longer for some people compared to others but in the end everyone is going to be fine so just stay positive and enjoy what you're doing that's the most important thing because i one thing i noticed in tisb was like a lot of people sort of had their life figured out on paper but they were really like miserable in person so don't be don't be miserable i would say just enjoy every second and in the end it'll all work out that that's all i have to say for 11th and 12th graders